evening guys this is Mel. welcome back to my youtube channel today in this video we are going to learn what is perpendicular illuminance and uh, we are also going to learn where and how to use this perpendicular illuminance in our lighting project using dialog Sevo. let's get started what is perpendicular illuminance perpendicular illuminance is the amount of light that falls directly on a surface at a 90 degree angle so with this diagram, don't get confused that the surface has to be a horizontal. No, we are not talking about the orientation of the surface here. We are talking about the light that will be hitting this surface at a 90 degree angle. The surface can be even your vertical surface like this. But if we are performing perpendicular illuminance, we are calculating the amount of light that is falling at 90 degree angle on this surface. Okay. Now, this can even be your tilted surface. Here too, we'll be measuring the light that is falling at the perpendicular angle to the surface. So, if you had observed, we are not talking here about the orientation of the surface. Irrespective of the surface is horizontal, vertical or tilted, we are just focusing that whatever the light that is falling at a 90 degree angle, that is our perpendicular illuminance. I hope the definition is clear. Now let's go to dialogues, consider a sample project and learn more about it. For today's project, I had to consider multiple examples because uh, perpendicular illuminance is often a misunderstood topic and, it, and it's definitely a tricky part for me to explain it in a simple way. Okay. So here I have considered a sample project of a lab. My whole project is of a school. If you want to learn about the vertical illuminance, I have used the same project to explain vertical illuminance in my previous tutorial. You can check that. Now today we are discussing perpendicular illuminance. Let me walk you through this room to understand the use of this room. So the entrance of this lab is from here. And then we have the board and the table for the teacher. Then we have a straight table for the students. Then at the center of the room, we have demonstration table. Since I considered this lab to be a biology lab or anatomy lab, I have used this kind of table with a specimen on it. Then on the other side, I have a, another specimen kept vertically. Now, since we have seen the whole room, we understand that the main important thing for us to illuminate here is this demonstration table. Okay, this needs to have a good illuminance levels. You can refer your lighting code handbook wherein as per the project you're working on, there will be lux levels specified. Now, here I'm considering SIPSE lighting standards and uh, under the SIPSE, I search for demonstration table and I got the values that for the demonstration table, I need 500 lux. Okay, only on this table, I need the 500 lux. See, if yeah, if I need only on the demonstration table 500 lux, then obviously the overall room will be having higher lux than 500. Right. Now, here I have placed this barisal ceiling light to act as my main source of light to illuminate the table. Okay. And uh, now I'll go to the display option. I will keep the LEO line alignment on. Okay, so that it's easy for me to see the direction of the light. Okay, here we know that my surface where I need to calculate the light is this surface and light is placed right above it and the LEO alignment is straight downward. So the light is hitting at 90 degree angle on the surface. So I need to perform the perpendicular illuminance. I'll go to the plan view, draw calculation object like this go to the side views make sure to position it properly here okay now scroll down name it as since i'm uh, calculating on the table i will name it as demonstration table next you have positioning don't make any changes here because we have drawn and positioned it accurately then you have calculation parameters under here make sure you select perpendicular illuminance okay once the setting is made here though i have placed uh, linear profiles in the room i will not be calculating for the linear profiles i will be calculating the light only from this 
light source that is falling on the demonstration table. Run the calculation. Calculation is completed and you can see the results overview here. We are achieving 546 lux with 0.92 uniformity on this demonstration table. You can go to the plan view, click on the surface, false colors. You can even see the results in value chart as well. Okay, now I'm achieving the required lux levels on the demonstration table. See the Sipsay lighting code says that I need to achieve 500 lux and I'm achieving it. Right, your perpendicular illuminance is task specific calculations. Okay, here we were focusing only on one task that we need to illuminate this demonstration table with 500 lux and uh, the main source of light we had is this biosol ceiling light and we calculate the light from it and we are achieving 500 lux clear now we have even linear profiles in this room let's run the calculation check the results for this calculation surface when even your linear profile is on run the calculation calculation is completed and when the linear profile and the biosol ceiling light is switched on i'm achieving 660 lux with 0.93 uniformity if only the barisol is on then i'm achieving 546 lux and 0.92 uniformity maybe you have a doubt that in perpendicular illuminance we are calculating only the light that is falling at a perpendicular angle then if i'm calculating light for the whole light scene including my linear profiles why is the lux levels on the demonstration table increasing well let me explain you that i will switch on all the light distribution curves okay so firstly again there can be a misconception while understanding the perpendicular illuminance that when i say we are calculating the amount of light that is falling at 90 degree angle on the surface i'm talking about the light falling on the surface i'm not telling that the light source has to be exactly above it okay now even the light from the linear profile is impacting my lux levels on the demonstration table how even though it is not it is not exactly above the surface if we keep switch on the light distribution curves of the surface you, you see this is this is more diffuse light spreading in all directions and okay this light is not a narrow spot it's not a narrow spot saying that the light will hit only here no it's not narrow it's diffuse optics and it will spread light in all the directions okay and when it is spreading light in all the directions that some amount of light will also fall at 90 degrees on the surface that's the reason when i'm calculating the whole light scene including my linear profiles and the parasol there is slightly increase in the illuminance levels on this surface i hope this is clear now there can be another question like maya if this is a case then why am i not using a horizontal illuminance here instead of getting confused with this perpendicular illuminance yes you're right we can we can use horizontal calculation surface itself the reason we are using perpendicular calculation surface is because we are focusing on a task here perpendicular illuminance is more task specific okay that's the reason when we did the first calculation we were focusing only switching on this light source and evaluating if this light source is enough to illuminate my table and with that with only the barisol i was achieving 546 lux 0.92 uniformity doing this task specific calculations help us whether whatever the voltage and lumen i'm using for this barisol light is good enough for me to achieve the lux i require without turning any other lights i hope that is clear i would request you to watch this tutorial till the end because i'll be using multiple examples so that you will understand this concept by the end of this tutorial with just one example it is little bit difficult to understand this complex topic okay now let me show you another example here i have this specimen okay and i have placed this linear profile 
and uh, switch on the LEO alignment of the light and it is hitting like this falling at a perpendicular angle on this surface okay so i will go and draw the calculation surface only on this specimen and i will calculate perpendicular illuminance why am i calculating perpendicular illuminance why not vertical illuminance perpendicular illuminance because i'm doing task specific calculation i want to make sure that linear this linear profile is enough to get enough of illumination on this surface okay so here we are just doing task specific calculation we are not doing the entire calculations right so let us go to the side views make and make our specimen visible to properly draw the calculation object draw calculation object first point second point and extend it this is the surface place it here name the surface let me name it as specimen enter and i will choose perpendicular illuminance okay now in since i'm performing task specific calculation i will make a light scene i'll click on light scene create empty light scene name this as task specimen lighting create new luminar group under this this is my task lighting i will click and add it here name it as linear on wall okay and uh, with this linear on wall i'm going to check how much lux level i'm achieving okay so i will choose the light scene from here task specimen lighting in the settings i'll make sure it is in standards without objects and furnitures run the calculation calculation is completed and here you can see at the specimen perpendicular illuminance i'm achieving 294 lux with 0 0.9 uniformity with only this linear profile i'm achieving 294 lux which is a good lux level and uh, let us check if we are switching on all the lights what am i achieving okay if i'm switching on all the lights i'm achieving around 400 lux with 0 0.91 uniformity so it's good and this is how you will be doing perpendicular illuminance perpendicular illuminance is is more for you to help in your lighting design to select proper voltage and lumen output of the luminaire okay now let me show you another example i hope the next example will be it will be more easy to understand the importance of perpendicular illuminance in your lux simulations okay here i have a small home project and uh, we'll be focusing only on the dining table okay with this project let us assume we have a scenario wherein your client wants to be sure that these downlights are giving enough illumination on the dining table irrespective of the pendant light okay so how can we do that again this kind of scenario is task specific for that we will draw the calculation surface on the dining table here and we will name it as dining table and we will check perpendicular illuminance till here correct right now generally what you do is in your lux simulation you you have done all the spaces you place calculation surface and suppose if you're working on this one you will directly place horizontal illuminance and check the lux levels and you generate the reports okay but if your client asks if these two lights are enough irrespective of chandelier being switch on or switch off because obviously chandeliers will not be on all the time so what we will do we'll go to the light we'll create a light scene and uh, here is the light scene for all the lights then i have created the light scene for only the pendant I have added only the pendant and then I have made the light scene for downlights and I have added this to downlights. I am separating only the groups of light. The calculation surface remains same and settings I will stay in standard without objects and furniture run the calculation. Now let's understand this one by one. When my all lights are on here. On the dining table, I'm achieving 502 lux with 0.74 uniformity. Very good because we are achieving the required lux levels and uniformity. Suppose if only my pendant light is on, then I'm achieving 
187 lux 0.83 uniformity and uh, as we discuss we have a scenario wherein your client have asked you whether only the downlights will be enough to illuminate the table irrespective of pendant being used or not so let's check with the downlights i'm getting only 264 lux with 0.69 uniformity which is slightly less than what i require okay i require at least 300 lux on my dining table with the general lighting okay so what i can do is see this perpendicular illuminance this perpendicular illuminance calculation help me analyze whether whatever the lighting i have chosen here is good for my application or not if i don't calculate this perpendicular illuminance and if i just do overall calculation and i will say i'm achieving 500 lux with 0.74 uniformity it is good enough and i submit the reports but in actual when we consider only the downlights i'm not achieving even 300 lux i'm achieving 264 lux which is slightly low than what i require so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to use other downlights maybe with slightly higher voltage than what i have used here and check the calculations okay perpendicular illuminance will also help you on deciding what voltage you have to choose for your decorative lighting okay like here with just pendant light i'm getting 187 lux 0.83 uniformity which is more and contributing around 40 percent to my overall illumination it is high right this data helped us in checking if we are using right voltage and lumen for the pendant as well i hope you understood the use of perpendicular illuminance perpendicular illuminance is task specific calculation you can use this uh, perpendicular calculations when you are still doing the lighting design okay when you're working on the spaces and um, you want to be sure if this light is enough for you to get the get that task lighting if you go for overall illuminance you can change the per perpendicular illuminance into horizontal or vertical illuminance as per the, as per the surface but initially when you are in the process of designing do task specific lighting and you want to be sure that you are choosing a right luminous with the right voltage and lumen output this perpendicular illuminance will help you i hope you understood this topic it's slightly confusing in the starting with regard to the surface as a, and where to use but once you practice this on multiple projects you will understand the importance of it so this is it guys in this video i hope you found this video helpful if you did please do hit a thumbs up subscribe to my channel and stay tuned to explore more in dialogues with me thank you